Welcome to the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast, bringing you the country's top podcast on the subject of internet marketing. I'm your host, Glenn Thayer, and today we're going to discuss blogging on the internet. I'm here with the CEO of Intuitive Websites, Thomas Young, and web marketing guru, Dennis McCarthy. Guys, let's talk about the fundamentals of blogging for businesses. We know that there's tons of personal blogs out there, but business blogging is a, a little bit different, should we say. Well, it is, and, and blogging gets its name from logging, <laughs> you know, logging your notes and, and posting your notes and that sort of thing. And there's really two fundamental areas that you can think about when you think about blogging, and one is the idea of blogging for entertainment or for news. And those are two very separate things where someone might have a personal blog and you can see what they're up to, what vacation they're taking, what their family's doing. And then there's a lot of news blogging where people um, consider themselves to be reporters and they, they write what the news – the news is the way they see it. And they also put comments at as far as what they think about the news and what's happening. And, and that's those, actually becoming even more popular. Those A lot of the blogging sites are actually superseding some of the large format – News sites like oh, the well, Washington it's, it's, Post and whatnot, yeah. and they're it's killing print newspapers. Oh, absolutely! I mean, the things that we grew up with, getting the newspaper in the morning, and your parents reading the newspaper, that's about to go away. I mean, it's literally about to go away. The, the Rocky Mountain News in Denver is for sale, and Denver is one of the last cities to have two newspapers. And you know, Chicago so Tribune went bankrupt. Christian Chicago Science yet. Monitor just killed their daily subscription. That's right. They're, 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 and now they're they're internet producing only. internet only. And they're producing one, I think, one a week. They'll do one, uh, one print a week that they'll do. It's, and it's the, the whole business of um, small handheld readers hasn't even taken off yet. It's begun to with the Kindle and things like that. Yeah. But um, that's but just not there yet. It's I mean, the, the New York Times, which is one of the most famous newspapers in the world, is now doing advertising on its front page. Uh, just to try to make money. I mean, so they're really struggling. And what's what's killing it is the internet, and, and on a f more fundamental level, what's killing it is blogging. And the upside of that is anybody can become a reporter, and you have a lot more information and content. The downside of that is who's verifying this? What are the standards for journalism? And how do you report on local stuff? If the local newspaper is going to go away, then who's going to talk about the corruption down at the state house or whatever? Exactly. I mean, so there's a lot of issues going on with blogging, but it is changing things, and it's happening right now. But the area, the area we want to talk about, because most of our listeners work in small businesses and want to market online, is how do you use blogging to help grow your business? And what's, what's a, uh, a marketing model that you can use to blog on the web? And, and you know, our philosophy is, is that a blog is, once again, it's an interactive form for you to get your content, your value-added content, uh, to your target markets in a, in a very cost-effective way and in, in a very quick manner. And allow them to comment back on what you're posting. And, and, and it's a way you can log in and within five or ten minutes you've posted information so people can read it and see it. You know, the, the great thing is, uh, you know, talking, talking, taking this from the last podcast we did on social marketing, this is the next step in social marketing because you're actually allowing all of your readers to comment on what you've posted. So if you post something out there, you could actually pose questions to your customer base. Right. As long as they subscribe to your blog or view your blog, you can put a question. We're thinking about rolling out a new product. Right. Instant feedback. What do you, what do you think about this? And your customers are going to tell you, you know, that's a horrible idea or we've been waiting for this. How about you improve upon this? And then you'll get feedback immediately that you would have never gotten before. Yeah, and the genius is in doing it before you launch the product. And most companies don't. And they get the feedback even when they didn't want it. Uh, the, I think the next step is is if you get feedback you didn't want, post that anyway. Oh, because absolutely. what you're doing is you're basically saying, hey, you know, um, this is what people said about the product. We're listening to what you said. We're going to update it and make it better. And the next version of the product is going to take in to account what you guys have said on our, on our blog. And that's something else to, to be weary of is because obviously you open up your blog for comments. That's really, really important to do. However – you also have to be careful as a business owner on both sides is how much are you willing to censor? Because if you come across as somebody who censors a lot, just censors what they don't want to hear, uh, people will stop posting and stop utilizing your blog. Yeah, the, the idea of censorship is really going to go away. I mean, the, the web is, is an open resource. If you censor something, someone else will put it out there and not censor it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I mean, what we do in, in consulting with clients, we say, Writing content is one of the best things you can do to market your business. And if you want that content out on the web quickly in a nice, organized fashion, a blog is a good way to do it. 
Um, you know, we feel like this content is what's going to add the value to your customers, whether it's it's in their business or in their personal life. Nice thing about the comments is that content is being created on your behalf by others that you didn't have to do. Yeah. So it's all search engine bait. The blog articles and the comments are all being indexed by the search engines. Well, the great thing with blogs is something that, that a lot of people don't understand is you can link to other people's blogs. And if you've got – you can do a track back to somebody else's blog and actually piggyback and comment. Let's say um, – you know, I, I love using uh, real estate as, a, as an example, but there might be a great real estate article that you want to send out to all of your people that you say, hey, this is a great, great information that I found on realestate.com. And so you can actually do a track back to realestate.com. You comment on it. And then people start looking at your comment on your smart comment that you may have that, that was actually – it was a comment that added to the blog. People want to find out who you are, and they click on and they track back to your blog. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's a great point. And search engines not only love the content, but search engines, especially Google, love the links. So it's, it's all great ways to not only get your content out there but also drive more traffic into your website. And people really do read those comments. More and more people are familiar with that. That becomes an essential part of the article in many cases because you get to say it's an article about politics. You get to read the article about politics, and then you get to hear what 20 people thought about it, 20 different viewpoints on the article you just read. So those comments are an important part of the whole experience for readers. And that's a, that, I think that's, a, that's in my opinion, what I've seen in, in the blogosphere out there, if you will, is, is your comments are just as important as the, con- as the content Sometimes itself. more so. Sometimes someone will add something that you didn't think of. If it's a if it's an article about the best software for um, doing blogging, uh, there'll be three or four ideas in the comments that weren't mentioned in the article most times. It's funny to go to see. Like I recently bought a, a pair of headphones, and I went to the Apple website and I looked at the uh, marketing content for the headphones. And of course, the marketing content is these. They're just the most amazing headphones you've ever seen in your life, right? And then you go read the comments from the users, right? And you scroll through and you see, you know. Three stars, four stars, five stars, one star, two star, four star. I almost bought their I almost bought their Bluetooth headset, and the comments were, "Don't buy this. It's the worst product I've ever seen." <laughs> and if you read the marketing comments, you know it's like the technology used in here is you know cutting edge, and it's the top of the line, and the clarity, and all that. No, the comments kind of make it real, don't they? The comments kind of say, "Here's the real story on this product." And I bought the one that had comments on it that were just you know. Hey, listen, using these headphones is like you can hear the, the musician's fingers on the fretboard of the guitar, you know, that kind of thing. And then you say, that, that's great. That's what I want. So we recommend well, do allow for commenting. You can turn it on or off on your blog. And absolutely. And you can edit. Allow. You can edit them off as well. But what would you suggest? How, how should a business respond to negative comments? Yeah, well, we talked about this earlier. I mean, I think that when you get a negative comment – uh, you just say, hey, you know, this is a comment we've heard. We've heard it from more than one person. We're going to work on this. We're going to fix it. And this is what we're going to do about it. Um, I, I think you have to go directly now. So you're going to get some negative comments from people that just post negative comments. So you have to filter the source too. But for the most part, you respond to it. I mean, I would love to see that. I would love to see companies come out and say, hey, you know, we have gotten feedback that, that this part of our product has an issue with it. We're going to fix that on the next on the next run. Now, do we have any statistics anywhere that show conversion ratios uh, that have gone up because of blogging? Well, we know we know that content converts. I mean, we we've seen that with our clients, and we've seen that with our own website. And a blog is just a, a, a you know content on steroids. It's a lot more content out there. It's going to help you convert. Uh, at, the thing about setting up your blog is, is, is you want to use uh, uh, something like WordPress. And, and what, what WordPress will do is allow you to set up a table of contents for your blog. So you have to give it some thought. You have to develop the strategy for it. But within that table of contents, you should be posting on a regular basis, probably weekly, maybe biweekly. As much and as possible, it, really. Let's take, a, let's take a big step back here because some people might go, you know, I want a blog, but I have no idea where to start. Where should a company start as far as a blog is concerned because there's a couple of, of issues that that people can run into because blog software for your website specifically uh, I, I think might be a little cumbersome if you're not using like a WordPress or blogger.com. Well, I think, I think you start without even thinking about technology. You start with what do we have to say that's interesting and um, 
So that would go with picking a domain name for your blog then. Would that and it be would also or- go with what's your keyword focus. So many people just start. They just start writing blogs. They go in, They get into the technology before they think about the strategy. And uh, the strategy is what do we have to say to the world that's going to be valuable to them? And um, if you add value out there, it will come back as business and relationships with uh, your target market. And the other thing is what's your keyword focus? Blogging is all about keywords and tagging and uh, blogs are just big search engine magnets and uh, link machines. So um, before you even look at technology, be thinking about the, those sort of fundamental things. Most of, most of our clients do end up using the word blog.com in their domain, though, right? I mean, is that something you recommend is to, to put that in there, or what are your thoughts about that? Uh, it depends on the company and the domain name, and there's so many different variables. But we use intuitiveblog.com. It just made sense for us. For we also we did buy intuitivewebsitesblog.com. We just made it smaller, but made the domain name shorter. But if you were, say, uh, you're a staffing company, you know, you could do hiring and staffing blog.com or something like that. I, yeah, so I people would think know it, what it is. Yeah, so be, I, think if, I think it does make sense to have the word blog in the domain just so you brand it as the blog and then link back to the main Then website. another big question is do you put your blog on a separate site or on your own site? And that's a big debate. And uh, if you do have yeah. a separate blog, do you sort of duplicate some of that copy over on your website? It's really gone are the days when you can have a website that never changes. If anybody out there listening has a website that hasn't changed in the past six weeks, you need to change your way of thinking about your website. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the big question is do we have two websites? Do we have uh, duplicate content on the two? Uh, how do we link back and forth? So that the whole thing has to be thought out before you even begin. Now, as far as having a, a, a website, I, I know for me, I have my blog is is based uh, with WordPress. Bought the domain, and then now it sits, sits at WordPress. So it's separate from what I have, and all my content goes there. Am I going to be uh, put down in the search engine rankings because of that, because it's not linked to my website per se? It is linked to my website, but it's not, it's not part of my it's on not, your website. It's not on my website. Well, that's a big debate. I mean, clearly, having all that content on your website would help you in terms of Google's understanding on, of the themes of your website. But is it immoral somehow to completely duplicate your e-newsletter, your blog, all on your website so you have a whole bunch of content? I don't know. Or is it? I've seen a lot of people take their website, and their website is their blog. Yeah, more so, so with, in, with these of, CMS sites like Joomla sites, people do that because Joomla allows for a dynamism that you can't get with um, a static website. Uh, so it's really kind of um, something you have to determine. And, and in terms of like a, a hard line of advice that we could give for keep your blog in a different site or not, it's we don't really have the solutions for that. I do know that there are major benefits to linking between the two sites, between your blog and between your your, your main presence. Uh, now the blog should really be where you establish yourself as an expert in your field. That's now, We tend to recommend most of our clients have it separate, and I think that's probably a good recommendation in you know, the this, this small to medium-sized business. But I think if you're a consultant or maybe an entertainer or someone who's got a different approach, you might want to combine the two. But if you have a website with an article library... Do you take your blog articles and also include them on your website? Yeah, well, or can you just link them and have and show up more as a link form? Or you do both. I mean, what we do on intuitivewebsites.com is I write an email newsletter. That newsletter becomes an article, and then I write to the blog. So and you're then we do the podcast. Triple the blog. dipping. I am absolutely. So what? So once somebody does, they choose the domain name for their blog. They know what they're going to do. Which service should they use? Should they use blogger.com or wordpress.com? They're both good. Uh, There's a huge WordPress community of um, extensions and things that help you get found and help you link things to one another. And you can drop a podcast in there with these cool little um, bells and whistles that play the audio. Um, so you guys are using WordPress. We we like WordPress, uh, but Blogger is a very strong platform as well. So, uh, WordPress is twenty four on the Alexa list, and it looks like Blogger dot com is is quite a bit higher at thirteen. So, they're both fairly popular. So it doesn't matter which one they use; it's just choose one and go. Choose one and go. Yep. Yeah, whichever one, whichever interface really you prefer. And, and I want to talk just a little bit about driving traffic to a blog, too, because it's much more of an organic process to drive traffic to a blog. I don't think it's something you necessarily would do like paid clicks or anything like that. It's You really want to make sure that it's optimized well for the search engines. 
you want to tell people in your community and your customers and so forth about the blog, one of the things we do is on all our emails that go out at the bottom of the email, it says, check out our blog for you know, free resources and information. So it's, you know, it's almost like you drive people to the blog one at a time. It should be a major link on your website. It should be part of your just part of your integration navigation you system on your website. Which I think would probably go without saying that your look and feel of your blog should mirror your website. Yeah, the, for the most the, part, the, the same, um, basically, but not too different. You know, you don't want to have a, like a total different color scheme for your blog. No, but similar, website. so they know when they're on your regular website, it looks this way. When they're on your blog, it looks the same way. Consistent logo treatment, for example. Yes. Colors, colors, logos, all of that. Well, how would somebody get conversions from their blog? Well, you know, once again, it, the conversion should be more of an organic process. And I'm, I'm thinking that you want to have contact information on the blog, co- contact us. But just like in social networking, you want to be appropriate. And I would, I would just have the content kind of speak for itself. Um, and then if you want to link back to your main site, use a contact form and that sort of thing. Um, I wouldn't try to be too tricky in saying, you know, click here to learn more or contact us to learn more and that sort of thing. Take a very straightforward approach, just like you're having a conversation with someone. They'll contact you for more information. So it's give the information out. Just like social marketing, be the expert. Yeah. Be the person there. Be the resource, and the business will come. I, yeah, the, the biggest advantage, I think, for businesses of blogs is it's so quick and easy to go in and post content. You know, you log into your browser, you type up your content, you save it, and you're done. It's on the Internet. And I think that's the biggest advantage, and, and you know, just use valuable content. Yeah, it's content is king. And the bottom line is if, if, if you're trying to sell somebody something, they'll notice it. If you're trying to help someone, they'll notice that as well. If you have a product or service that is truly an enhancement to an article in your blog, then you're helping, and you're not just trying to pitch something. What do they say? People love to buy and hate to be sold. There you go. They do. They, that's, they do no, buy. no better words for talking about blogs, really. Well, we end each of our podcasts with an action item plan. Tom, what are the key action items for the listener? Well, actually, I think you, you need to go to WordPress and you need to go to blogger.com and set up a blog for your business um, and, and start writing content. I mean, even if you, the first thing you, you hear from us today is the idea that you're going to do a blog, start writing content and write lots of it. Uh, once the blog is going, think about how you're going to organize that content and think about how you can build a community of people that come to the blog and comment on what they see. Uh, if you want, you can go to our blog, intuitiveblog.com, see examples of how all this works, and add content every week. Set a reminder so that every week you go in and add some content. And, you know, every time we talk to clients about creating a blog, they freak out about the content part because it's a ton of work. They're not that comfortable with writing. There's multiple ways to get that content added. You need a bunch of people helping you add content. You need to, when someone reads something interesting that's related to your industry, you need to link to that, do a little paragraph on it, and link to that. That's a great and easy way to get content added. And um, consider all kinds of different content, video and audio, as well as just text. Well, to piggyback on that last thing is it, the content doesn't have to be huge. It can be a paragraph. Exactly. It doesn't have to be a lot of information. So even if you're blogging twice a week, it's important to at least blog twice a week. Oh, Even absolutely. If it's a we've, we've talked about this in other podcasts. I mean, people want to read your content. You know, get rid of all the fluff and that, that sort of thing. Get right to the point with how we The bottom line is you're creating a publication. Like, think of it as a magazine. Add value to the publication, and people will come. Well, you heard it from the experts, folks. This has been the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. And for more information and to see all the available podcasts and much more, visit intuitivewebsites.com and intuitiveblog.com. <laughs>